So it's kind of a theme weekend uh, this weekend because went and saw two movies starring everyone's favorite Scottish trying to be American, trying to be whatever, action hero Gerard Butler. And I'm here to tell you which Gerard Butler that's come out in the past couple of weeks is worth seeing in theaters and which one, if you're curious enough, is worth seeing at any time. Let me start off with the first one that uh, I went to see this weekend, which was the newest release, London Has Fallen. This is actually a sequel to Olympus Has Fallen, which was released, I believe, in 2013. And I'm honestly, you know, I enjoyed that first movie quite a bit. Is it cheesy, silly, out of date 80s, 90s action schlock? Yeah, yeah, it is, but I love 80s, 90s action schlock. And as for pretty much the first movie, I believe uh, White House Down was the second movie to do it that year, that was essentially Die Hard uh, in Washington, D.C., it did the job. I mean, it, it was very entertaining, very violent, some pretty good stunt work, and pretty good stakes, and Gerard Butler is a great action lead. Regardless, regardless of how stupid and... <laughs> how preposterous the whole situation is. He sells action like nobody else. He sells that machismo. So this follow-up, London Has Fallen, honestly, it's not, it doesn't outshine the original, but it doesn't really detract either. It's on an even playing field with the original, which is, it's stupid, it's ridiculous, but man, you'll be entertained by it if you enjoy Gerard Butler just killing every single person left and right in the most gruesome way possible. And this time a couple things they kind of change up is that he's not really the lone man going against the whole army now. He actually gets Aaron, Ar Aaron Eckhart's uh, President Asher involved in the action since they spend a majority of the film together as he is in charge of his detail while he's visiting London for the death of the Prime Minister. And so we get a little bit of Eckhart in on the action here too, but his response to all this violence taking place around him, it seems very natural. Like, he fires a gun here and there, he helps him, like, do a getaway drive at one point from the terrorists. And, but he sells, like, kind of this panic, but at the same time, fortitude. Because he's already been in the shit once, so even though he's a little freaked out by what's going on around him, he's kind of acclimated to it well, to the point that by the time, spoilers here, the president finds himself in trouble, he's not really like cowering in fear or anything, like he's standing bold and fierce as he's about to get his head cut off on live internet. And so I buy that dynamic, especially if you if you go into this knowing that there was a movie beforehand and buy that these guys have seen some shit together. And I am totally along for the ride throughout all of this because they ended up, even though we don't spend a lot of time getting to know the characters so much, their interactions together seem very, like, genuine, and you get a sense of some kind of history. Even with Gerard Butler and Angela Bassett, who, again, spoilers, she ends up dying within the first attack, and she's only got, like, one action sequence with the guys and the build-up before that. But... After her death, like, I'm genuinely wanting to see Gerard Butler kill all these people because they, without a doubt, killed a very likable person that her character played. Gerard Butler and her... I should stop calling him Gerard Butler because this is going to be Gerard Butler full to the brim with the other movie. Uh, what's his name? Mike Banning. His character's name is Mike Banning. This Scottish guy trying to pretend he's American. So Mike Banning and uh, Angela Bassett have this like little talk while they're on Air Force One heading to London, and she's talking about like how he's going to make her the godmother of his kid. And it's a nice, quiet, sweet interaction. And I'm like, oh, she's obviously gonna die. Even though I called it ahead of time, I still felt bad when she did die. Cause you know what, their interaction, however brief, however brief her setup as a character was, she made the most of it. And you buy like that there's some kind of relationship there. There's some kind of uh, friendship there. And so when she dies and pretty much is never mentioned again in the movie, but Mike Banning then dedicates himself to slaughtering all these fuckers left and right in the most horrible fashion possible. Like, I was rooting for him then. It's like when John Wick was seeking revenge on the Russians and stuff because his dog got killed. I hate to compare Angela Bassett's role in this movie to a little cute puppy, but it felt like that, honestly. Like, I liked her character, and she was in the, th she was in the shit with him for a while, too, before things got heavy. So when she dies, I was like, oh, man, 
get these fuckers now. And he does. He ends up playing a lot of the same beats from the first movie and playing a lot of beats from Die Hard. <laughs> he has like a walkie-talkie exchange with one of the terrorists and is basically, uh, as a terrorist is trying to say like, is your president there because we're going to execute him live on television? And, and the, he and the president are sitting there listening and he's like, yeah, he heard you. You hear this? Puts the walkie-talkie to this guy's brother's ear and starts like twisting a knife slowly in the dude's back and the dude starts screaming he's like that's the sound of your brother dying I'll see you soon buddy and like <laughs> that kind of shit and he sells that intensity he sells the fact that he is going to end every one of these people and at the very end when he has this slug out fest with uh, that same character he's saying like it's very uh, very America fuck yeah <laughs> in this movie but saying like you know what you know what you guys' problems is is that we're many and you're only a few and a thousand years from now we'll still be here and you won't as he's like choking the life out of this dude and like you can just see the anger and intensity on his face and Honestly, this is a very well put together action movie. It doesn't rely too heavily on a lot of shaky cam stuff. I actually can see what's going on. There was actually a cool tracking shot, which I'm sure wasn't all one shot, but they splice it together in quick edits here and there, which feels like a, not a first person of a video game, a first person perspective, but you're following along with Mike as he's racing through the London streets, dodging fire and like launching you know, grenades and shit at people as he's trying to get to this abandoned complex. It's a fun ride. It definitely is. There's quite a few uh, people who show up in here that I feel sometimes make the most of it, sometimes don't make the most of it. Morgan Freeman returns, but he's kind of delegated again to that role of sitting and responding to terrorists in a in a situation room. Jackie Earl Haley now joins the group, and for a while I thought he was going to turn out to be the bad guy, but now he's just sitting there being part of the uh, the response team, as it were, and <laughs> makes the most of his bit part, I guess. Oliver Queen's stepdad from the first season of Arrow uh, shows up as uh, the chief inspector in London. And for a while, I thought he was going to turn out to be the bad guy, but no. Turns out the bad guy, I believe, is, uh, what's his name? D.I. The guy who played D.I. Cregan from Touching Evil. I'm not quite sure. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. I should have probably researched it beforehand, but whatever. I wanted to talk about Gerard Butler so fast. He turns out to be the trainer in the end, and he has a cool little quiet send-off, but I kind of called that from the beginning. I'm like, yeah, he seems a little too weaselly to be, <laughs> to be on the up and up. It's an enjoyable little bit of action schlock. Is it necessarily good? Not really. I'm sure it's, get, it's getting kind of a brutal uh, treatment uh, review-wise from critics, but honestly, I had a good time with it. I enjoyed it fine enough. Am I gonna see it again anytime soon? Is it gonna become one of my number one favorites of the year? Probably not, but you know what? It was a good hour and 40 some minutes or so to enjoy and to kill off some time and just have a good time, because he, he delivers on the action, he delivers on the one-liners. Uh, he delivers on some comedy in here, too. Like, he and the president have a lot of, like, funny interactions. This uh, group of terrorists disguised as their extraction team bust into their MI6, like, safe house, or MI5 safe house. He gives the president a gun and has him hide in this smaller alcoved area. And he says, don't, don't open that door. For anyone but me and if anyone else comes in the door you take this and unload everything into that person the president says well what if you don't come back and straight up gerard butler or mike banning just says you're fucked <laughs> and just leaves him and then later on as the president saves his life and headshots one of the uh, terrorists who's like taking aim at uh, mike banning and at the very end he's Mike Manning, it, it's definitely like an applause scene where like, finally the president killed somebody, cool. But right after it is followed, uh, Mike Manning saying, I was wondering how long it would take for you to get out of the closet, or to come out of the closet. <laughs> and that warranted a good laugh from me, from the audience. It's stupid and cheesy as all hell, but Gerard Butler in this movie really sells me on the cheese. So London Has Fallen is the Gerard Butler action schlock movie that I recommend you go see in theaters. The other one, which is, honestly, I'm a little late on this one, but got busy, 
So for when I went into this movie, I had very low expectations based off of what I heard, but I wasn't ready to go in angry because I was more curious than angry about this next one. I went and saw Gods of Egypt, and again, my curiosity outweighed my, you know, initial, like, dread. If anything, I'm like, because this thing, compared to London Has Fallen, this, this movie is getting hammered from all sides with regards to its critical response, with regards to its box office, with regards to the controversy about yet again whitewash, whitewashing a very non-white culture. <laughs> I, my curiosity couldn't help itself. I had to go see this thing just to see what all the hubbub was about. And wow, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one was the dumb Gerard Butler movie in a couple of weeks of dumb Gerard Butler movies. This one is miles more special. Gerard Butler is honestly the saving grace of this film because if it wasn't for him I probably would have fallen asleep at this film pretty quick. So, so by the numbers, so below average with regards to anyone really giving a shit other than Gerard Butler. I'm not gonna lie the very Caucasian looking Egyptians are pretty distracting when you have some darker scare, darker skin folks say like an Elodie Young or a Chadwick Boseman in this movie in very very minor roles compared to the leads who are very beach bum suntan blonde haired looking <laughs> And again, the one saving grace of this uh, viewing experience was Gerard Butler as the God Set. Because he just does not give a shit, but good lord, at least he is like trying. He's not trying to conceal his accent. This is more, this is a very Scottish Egyptian God we have here. But <laughs> anything to watch him kind of pull a faux King Leonidas, sure. There are a couple of moments where. Honestly, someone is like talking to him and saying like you he's out of control He's a mad god with power at that point and someone saying like stop this set it is madness And at that point I really wanted him to just say something like madness This is Egypt and just give into it. Come on, when you're set up that quickly with a line so easy to give it to you Just give me the this is Blank, big de declaration. Everyone else is on full autopilot. Poor Jamie Lannister. I really want him to have a good vehicle to kind of get like a little bit more leading man stuff going. He's given nothing to do with here as uh, Horus, the god Horus, and uh, Seth's nephew. Between this and being the bad guy in The Other Woman, <laughs> man. Yeah, Lodi Young's in this as the goddess of love, and she has like this love-hate relationship with Horus, and I, their chemistry, you can't find it anywhere there. And it's paralleled by this mortal uh, street rat thief guy and his bland love interest who <laughs> he has to try and uh, stop set and although otherwise she'll be lost in the underworld or be lost in the afterlife forever. These people did nothing for me. I was I was really kind of sad that we weren't following Gerard Butler for the majority of this movie because the this dude especially this uh, thief uh, what's it? Beck his name is Beck of course it is. This guy is as charismatic as cardboard. Like, he doesn't have chemistry with anybody on screen. He doesn't have chemistry with the girl who's playing his love interest. She, frankly, is a better actor with regards to her material in this movie than he is. And she's, like, wandering around the afterlife for a couple of scenes. Like, if they made this more about her, maybe I'd be more forgiving about this particular role. Like, if she was the street thief or whatever, but no, we gotta follow this bland, uninteresting, wide-eyed expression dude. Yeah, stuff is just ridiculous all over the place here. Poor Jeffrey Rush, uh, he plays the sun god Ra, and <laughs> spends most of his time on a magical sailboat over the flat earth, <laughs> killing off uh, the Galactus storm cloud from the rise of the Silver Surfer. 
Yep. I don't I don't know what else to say about this movie. It, it is as bad as everyone has been saying. It, it, I don't care that it's like its story is bullshit essentially like and bullshit even for like a fantasy movie just making stuff up as it goes along making up rules and worlds as it goes along it's very much the seventh son of the year so far with regards to it does not give a crap about its world or mythology it'll throw new ideas and new twists at you every which way for the sake of throwing twists at you for something that visually kind of works a little bit with regards to just set design and visuals it's very unimaginative and that's too bad too because I like the director uh, some of his previous work Alex Proyas who he directed The Crow he directed Dark City which I honestly really enjoy Dark City he actually has Rufus Sewell show up here uh, Dark City alum as this very obvious Rufus Sewell villainous architect this was a very kind of boring set and for that it is pretty terrible not enjoyable terrible I didn't find myself laughing a lot at a lot of the stupid stuff that happens here because there's nothing to really find entertaining in that so stupid it's fun stuff with this movie with London has fallen, there's stupid shit happening left and right and outrageous stuff happening left and right, but at least it popped a little bit. At least it had a little bit of some flair to its stupidity. In Gods of Egypt, where you've got Gerard Butler and Jamie Lannister fighting one another as enhanced CGI Falcon and Jackal robots, and you're just kind of like, <sighs> That's not good, Alex Proyas. <laughs> so basically what I'm saying is that Gods of Egypt is the one you should check out only if you're that curious about its badness. I'm looking forward to seeing Elodie Young and Chadwick Boseman, Boseman do better work later this year. Elodie Young in um, Daredevil as Elektra. I hope she does very well with that. Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa as the Black Panther. I hope he does very well with that. If, you, if you're a fan of like the die-hard knockoff type of action film that has kind of been resurfacing in the past couple of years, London Has Fallen is for you. If you're a fan of Alex Proyas or whitewashed Egyptian mythology taken to the Stargate and uh, Clash of the Titans level, wait for this to come on Netflix. <laughs> Wait for this to show up on TNT We Know Drama. It's not worth the ticket price. Gods of Egypt, stay at home. London Has Fallen might be worth checking out in the theaters. All right, so uh, pretty soon I'll have a little House of Cards uh, Season 4 analysis review thingamabob taking place. But that was my weekend of Gerard Butler badness. There's the good badness, and then there's the Gods of Egypt badness.